We left off 856, page 856, second paragraph. Yeah. <coughs> if a person has certain things in place, what was it's the mindset that to what am I dedicated? What's my perspective in life? I'm dedicated to God. I'm appreciative that the Master did not rein in on me despite all my shortcomings, my failings. And also you recognize the greatness of, of God, the wonders of existence. And he says, in addition, and you attach to that abstinence from all the desires and pleasures of the world. And you will understand the greatness of the Creator, His awesomeness and His exaltedness. And then you will comprehend the smallness of your value. Uzi Russo, Uzvizuloso, and your level of unimportance. Bakach Yaker Rav Tuva Bori Olo Vagodel Chasdo Imo. You understand how, what the order is. You can only appreciate what God gives you, what God provides for you, if you feel that you're not deserving. But if you believe you're deserving, then you can't be appreciative. Then the love for God will be from the person who believes with a full heart, with a truthfulness, with a pure heart, and he will yearn for him with his initiatives. My soul, soul desires you at night. Because a person who loves, I mean, you take a look at the Ramel, at the Anhil Chuva, a person who loves, truly loves, as much as you're associated with whoever that may be, you're always yearning for the moment that you can do more and have that level of association. It's like you can't wait. I'll give you an example. A person's going to go out to see the national parks. And he planned for months, invested a fortune in all the planning, and he'd been talking about it. He, the whole family's hyped up that they're going out to see national parks, right? So, even at night, they think about it. They're, they're, they're waiting for that moment, right? For the car to pull up to go to the airport. Lahavdil. A person truly is imbued with this level of love even at night. You can't wait for the opportunity to do more. You consume with the love. To your name and even to the coming to mind. It's the desire of my soul. David says, My soul thirsts for you. My soul thirsts for you, you God. Don't say Shekhinah. Not a Shekhinah. No. When you see mountains, you don't see Shekhinah. You haven't seen them 30 days ago? Ocean, it's a different brocha. Different brocha. No, no, no. No, no. Osa Yama Godel. God created the, the, the great ocean. Osa Masabracious. You see a mountain range. Go out to the Rockies. Osa Masabracious. Because this exists from, from the very beginning of creation. That's the brocha, not, not a shechi on him. Lightning is the same. It's under another brocha. Yeah. 
No, lightning. Lightning's also most gracious. Also most gracious. Mountain, mountain range. It's built only a mountain range. Well, maybe when you see the Grand Canyon, you see a mountain too. I mean, the canyon's in between mountains. Yeah, exactly. You look up. <laughs> exactly. He says, what's really powerful to bring this about, which will assist the person to, to come to this level of love, this is if one has great reverence for God, and fear, there's reverence and fear, and you're fearful, you're afraid of the mitzvahs, mean that you should do the mitzvahs correctly. You're worried that maybe you won't, this is what we call Yerushchet. You're worried, you know, maybe I don't do the mitzvah correctly. And as a, as a result of that, a person's mindset is continuously engaged regarding God's hiddenness, what's revealed, and what's within yourself, what you see. And how he's involved in your life. How does God guide your life? You know, get a call from your accountant and lawyer. The insurance company won the case against the insurance company. The person's a doctor says, Or Hashem. You know, so you're appreciative. God is aware of what's concealed and what's revealed in the past and present. You know, nothing goes unseen, right? You know, Ayn Roya. Right? What's above, what's below. Yeah? You think about these three things, you'll never sin. What's above and what's below. Okay? His promise to you and his closeness to you. If you consider all this and you have a continuous cognizance of this, you cannot help yourself from being attracted to him, veering towards him, in your heart, in your innards, in the pureness of your heart, you will bind yourself to him with your love. And you'll feel secured as a result of his compassion and his great graciousness and mercy to you. And at that moment, when you feel, you think of no other love, only, only his love, the love for him. And the only one who you fear is only him. Nobody else has any relevance to it. Give you an example. Yeah. You have two people. A person's very bright, and somebody who's beyond. I mean, his brilliance is something one of a kind. So normally, when you engage with this very bright person, this brilliant person, you're very impressed and enjoy it. And now you come upon this other person, and they're both in your presence. Do you, do you even consider the brightness or the brilliance of the lesser person in, in the presence of the greater person? It's totally subsumed. As much you, because you're so taken by this overwhelming level of genius, the other level pales to it. So in terms of your experience, you have no sense of that other level of, of genius to be impressed. If you consider everything of what Hashem is and what He provides and what He does and what He is, at that moment, in terms of your emotion, your mind, you consume with the love, no other love exists at that moment other than that love. Because really, Moshe Rabbein was very hard to understand. I mean, he had a family, he had children, he had, he had, he 
was he well, he wasn't dedicated to his family. He wasn't concerned. He wasn't responsible. He was responsible for Kalal Yisrael. You understand when you're at that level, which we can't even relate to. Nobody could relate to what Moshe was. It's you if you if you're in the presence at that level, nothing else exists other than that. And the reason why you do everything else is because of your love for Him. It's not your family for your family. It's because that's what God wants me to do. And Kalal Yisrael is because that's what God wants me to do. That's a, in my, an expression of my love and reverence to God. That's why I'm dedicated selflessly to Kalal Yisrael. Not because I love my fellow Jew. What's the right? What do you love your fellow Jew? Is my, is my, is my flesh and blood? At the special level? No, because, because God says you have to love your fellow Jew. Not because there's a kinship there. It's, it's much more than that. It's Vapta the Recho Kamocha. Why? Because God gave him an, uh, a hint. That's not what he really wants to do. He says, allow me. So does God really want to do it? God says, allow me. See, he says, if he's leaving it up to me, if that's the case, he wants me to do something. Meaning it's within your power because really, I want, I need somebody to activate the attribute of Rachmin. So unless you pray, it's not going to happen. So it's up to you. But what do I really want? Of course I want they should, should remain to be continued. That would be loving.